football fans, welcome to Friday Night Varsity Preview. I'm Rachel George, joined in the studio by Aaron Schoonmaker. We are in week three. A lot of teams head on the road this week. Plenty of action going on. Let's jump right into things with the Laney Bucks, who are 2-0. Yeah, she says a lot of teams on the road. One team at home here in Wilmington this week is Laney. Their offense is on fire. They've got them out to a 2-0 start. I was at their practice yesterday, which was Tuesday, so check it out. All cylinders, man. We're trying to run the ball, pass the ball, air it out. We're trying to do everything on, on the offensive field, man. And all cylinders is exactly how the Laney receiving core is clicking through two weeks of the season. Senior Ernest Andrews and junior Tevin Clay have combined for 20 of the team's 21 receptions, accounting for 328 yards and a score. The Bucks turned a 14-game losing streak entering the season into a 2-0 start to the 2010 campaign. We practice harder. We live harder, we got a different mindset. Whatever has changed in the mindset of the 2010 Laney Bucks has worked. They're fresh off a 44-14 whooping of Pine Forest last Friday night. A score like that indicates great play on both sides of the ball, but the glaring difference in this year's team is a Porsche equivalent upgrade to their offense. We got a lot of weapons, so we can go either side of the ball, and uh, it's hard to cover that. <laughs> you got so many options. It helps that starting quarterback Mike Sheehan is healthy after missing last season with a broken collarbone. It also helps that Clay and Andrews are on the same page with their roles. He a speed player. I'm usually like a, a jump ball. I mean, I'm fast too, but I'm a jump ball player. We might send him deep because of his size, and then just send me on an out route, something towards the sidelines because of my speed, you know. Just something where we can get him downfield one-on-one -on -one with a DB and me one-on-one. -on -one. As for this week, a test against Havelock. Havelock. Gonna beat Havlock. Definitely gonna be a good test for the Laney Bucks this week. Yep. But now it's time for the best part of the show. My favorite, your favorite. <laughs> it's back again this Wednesday. We got guru pick artist Rachel George for her final week of picks right here. And we're gonna get right into it with the prop box. Bunch of goodies up in here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Our first game we're gonna go to is New Hanover, Eastern Wayne. Dig in that box. Tell me who you got this week. This is an easy pick, no surprise. New Hanover, they're going on the road to Eastern Wayne, coming off, lost to Scotton County. Eastern Wayne, though, is one-on-one -on -one with its only win over Goldsboro, a team that the, the Wildcats beat already. Beat them last year, not a tough one. And Hanover looked good in that win over Goldsboro. Yeah. I like that pick as yeah. well. Let's go to North Brunswick Trask. Two very good teams, very hot right now, coming off wins. Who do you like there? Well, North Brunswick is 2-0, but by a total of nine points getting wins. That team is always full of athletes, and if you ask me, nine points is kind of a, a little bit of a slow start for them. Trask has played one game, comes off a bye week after a, a loss to Topsail. This is kind of... I could be wrong. I was wrong last year on this. <laughs> Trask won, but I'm going with the, the Scorpions. I think they're going to win this one. If you look at my picks on Friday, I'm going the other way. You <laughs> figured out what you're doing. South Brunswick Topsail. Let's get into that one. I was at South Brunswick's game against Ashley last week. Looked uh, at times, but held Ashley to 73 total yards. I think that probably had more to do with Ashley than the South defense, but managed to win. 2-0, passing game continues yeah. to develop. Terrell Stanley going to ECU, we know this, he's a monster. Going up to Topsail, Topsail 1-1 one one after a loss to Pender last week, so I'm going with the Cougars. Hard to go against Stanley, that's a very that's good right. offense there. Rocky Mount at East Duflin, this gets a little more physical. This is definitely the game of the week. I wish we had the time for me to drive to this one. We will cover it, but Rocky Mount, a traditionally strong 3A program, off to a 1-0 start, but East Duplin, no slouches. A 63-7 win to start the season last week against North Lenore. Brian Aldridge, you know he's always got those running backs ready. Dre Scarborough is an absolute monster on defense. So for that reason, Help I can out. dig it out. Going Panthers on that one. And I love the helmet. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> My high school is Panthers, so I have a, a special affinity for that. <laughs> All right, last game we're going to go to. This is game five here. Be sure to check Friday for the rest of them. Game five here, East Columbus, Pender. Well, East Columbus is showing some promise and some, some signs are going in the right direction under first year coach Toby Cassell, but they're running into a 1A powerhouse here. Yeah. Pender at times looked a little iffy against Topsail last week, but the running game got going, managed to pull out a 26-10 yeah. win. They're 1-0, they're at home, they can run all over you, Shaq Hooper, Josh Johnson, all yeah. J.D. Powell, all those kids. So first time this season, going Patriots. And we're emptying the box with helmets. That's two helmets yes. for you this week. That's going to be a good game on the ground. Be sure to check that one out. Let's get into the other games. Ashley on the road at White Oak. Screaming Eagles 0-2 trying to get a win. Hoggard for the first time in 14 years also 0-2 up in Fayetteville at Jack Britt. 
Bucks 2-0, that's going to be a tough one for them. Well, Hoggard really needs to get things going. They need to get back to that physical brand. Laney needs to keep up what they're doing on offense. Tale of two offenses with those two teams right there. Yep, absolutely. You mentioned Laney, home against Havelock this week. Uh, another another key game that we'll be covering, James Keenan, 2-0 at East Bladen. The Eagles are only 1-0. They started last week, but it was a 52-0 win, so that's certainly the way to start. Another key game, Loris from South Carolina is at South Columbus. The Stallions started last week with a win over East Columbus, but Loris is a really good team that pounded, frankly, on North Brindle Beach last week. North Myrtle Beach, a team that West Brunswick will be playing, so Some, lots of action. Something like 80 to six, Loris has outscored their opponents. Yes. So good offenses on both sides. Yes. That'll be a fun one to watch. Yes, plenty of great games on the schedule. Be sure to tune in on Friday for Friday Night Varsity Flashback. We'll have lots of highlights. Anything you need throughout the week, week scores, standing stats, that's all on StarNewsVarsity.com. But for this week, for Aaron Scoonmaker and myself, Rachel George, this has been Friday Night Varsity Preview on StarNewsOnline.com. When we want to go out, we want to win a championship. We want to take the first one to take the conference championship to make a run in the playoffs.